And we're back with Emma Larkins, designer of Heart Catchers. Welcome to Design Diary, the podcast where you get to look inside my board game design notebook as well as what's going on inside my head. We look at a new word each day from the sense of mechanics, tone, theme, or inspiration for a full game. Today's word is... Spiel, or spiel, as I would say. Uh, uh, Another word I can't pronounce. A voluble line of extravagant talk. A speech delivered especially to sell or promote something. Spiel, spiel. And I, the first thing I think is the Spiel de Yaris. So. Right, yeah. <laughs> the game of the year, right? So Spiel, mean game in German or something? Yeah, I think it does. Yeah, right. Which is funny. Yeah. So so what did this inspire? Did it inspire a game of the year? <laughs> oh, phew, I hope so. Uh, of course, right away, where my mind goes to is uh, the selling or pitching games. So Red Flags, Fun Employed, Snake Oil... Uh, super fight the kinds of games where you're doing a pitch yeah, exactly. for yeah so if it's yourself <laughs> in red flags as a date uh, or fun employed as an employee snake oil making products um super fight you're like building these crazy superheroes um and i think i think those games are really fun it's interesting uh they they have very mixed reactions amongst gamers um the groups I've played with have always enjoyed it, but then sometimes when I, uh, apropos enough, pitch it at Mox Boarding House <laughs> to new groups playing it, they'll either think it sounds like the best thing ever, or they're like, ah, oh, it sounds like a lot of work. Oh, um, man. To, yeah. play, to play those, like, my group is extremely creative. Like, we can play a storytelling game and, and have so much fun with it. We can just roll, like, story cubes and have a blast with it. Nice. So, so my group, that works really well with. But when, yeah. you're, when you play those with a group that just doesn't have any creativity or or that just doesn't work with them it's it's so hard it's just like it's brutal yeah and i have fun because i'm working on a story game now confabula rasa and just in play testing it's been exciting because part of my goal for the game is to uh, make it easy for anyone to be a storyteller that's good but there's been a couple of tests there's been times afterwards where people are like, man, I'm not really a storyteller, but that was that was okay. So that that's good. That's but good. there's been other times when it's just like, you know, the person makes a word, gets to them, and then they're like, and I had a red balloon, and just like, yeah, okay, <laughs> uh, okay, next, uh, where do I go from there? Um, I, I, those yes. are bad when, it, especially when like everybody else is really into it too. It's just so hard. Yeah, I know. You're just like trying to keep it going. Um, around that kind of obstruction, which can be its own fun, interesting challenge. Um, so I think there's a ton of really great games that incorporate this idea of a spiel. Um, but when I thought of the word and in a game design context, I went into this like weird direction um, about the spiel Okay, so well, so first of all, what I was thinking about is being at mocks, and every day, like a big part of my job is uh, pitching games. So people come up, they're like, oh, I don't know what I want to play. What's a two-player game? What's a six-player game? I'm like, okay, <laughs> here's this. Like, here's Onitama. It's a two-player Japanese chess variant where you're trying to get your master to the opposite shrine. It's cool because the moves are determined by the cards, not by the pieces. Um, and you know, everyone who works there has kind of a different spiel. So when I was thinking about making a game from this, like, okay, what if how you pitch the game actually changed the mechanics? That's really cool, yeah. Of the game, right? Because everyone's going to pitch a little different. Or, you know, sometimes you, <laughs> sometimes we, like, grab a game off the wall or, like, I haven't played this yet. Uh, this is a <laughs> worker placement, <laughs> a resource management game about building statues. You know, probably, like, 90% of that was correct. Um, so I was thinking about something along the lines of flux, you know, where you like play a card, draw a card, play a card, and the cards kind of evolve the game, but, um, potentially something a little more storytelling, uh, a little less mechanical where it's kind of like you're building the game as it goes and kind of what you say determines the mechanics of the game. I don't know if you guys have like one of those like um, 
like employee suggested areas. <laughs> like I see them here. Like at, uh, one of the game stores had it, but like the record stores and stuff. Like you know, mm. employee picks. Oh yeah. What's for sure. What's cool about that is like you would go to the employee to to get the game that they you know shifted into. <laughs> Mm-hmm. That'd be pretty cool. Just like oh, you know, yeah. I like the, I like the way your games end up when I get them home, as opposed to you know hers. Yeah, yeah. There's a. It, it's interesting because sometimes people will be like, "What's your favorite game?" Like, that's the wrong question. I that, mean, I, I like the picks, and I think uh, all of us tend to pick games that a lot of people would like. Um, but it's very what someone might like you know it might be very different than what i like yeah i mean if they know you guys like a game in common or something then it makes sense but other than that it's just you know i guess it's sort of marketing right (laughs) yeah i mean except for my current staff pick which is cat lady which is (laughs) one of the best games ever and everybody should play that because it's great yeah i played cat lady at um the gen con release for at the uh the, the, the big game night and Oh yeah, that, that, that was a lot of fun, and we've had fun with it since. Yeah, that game does it sell like crazy there too? Because from what I see, it's selling like crazy. I I have to say, like, a, like so much of what we sell in the store does come down to what we pitch and what we push. <laughs> really? And yeah, this is like honestly, as a designer, like go to LGS LGSs if you can and get to know the staff and pitch the game you know they're not gonna push it if they don't like it but you know you can teach it to them and kind of like show them why it's fun and can and then they get it then you know those are the games that we put up in our library those are the ones that we we push to people you know because i've sold get yeah, uh, cat lady is my staff pick uh, our social media manager took a picture of me with uh cat lady and put the spiel up on facebook I lend it out all the time and you know all those things kind of add together to people starting to to get the game talk about the game um definitely makes a big difference to have people on the floor championing it that's awesome so talking about this um you know you guys shifting shifting the way games work it makes me think of your hashtag game design daily which is Mm. something that I found just as we were doing this podcast maybe it was like two weeks into it and I was like, oh, wow, that's exactly what we're doing here, too. Yeah. So I sort of adopted the hashtag as well and asked your permission if I can use it, which is funny. It's the first time I've ever asked permission to use a hashtag. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I thought it's, it was appropriate. I don't know. Yeah. I, I appreciate it. Uh, for me, it's. It, I feel like the more people use it, the better. And it's all about uh, the whole thing for me and every, just, like, more people making – more and better games and just like just more of everything um for me it was at this point when i started using it about eight ish months ago um you know i'd already done heart catchers already had the game published i was working on another game but as with you know anything that you're doing outside of maybe work it's it can be hard to find time and make time for it and especially when you're like making it into these big chunks of things it's like well i want to work on my game but i have to like redo all the art for all the cards or i have to like take it to a play test or something you put these kind of arbitrary boundaries in between you and progressing on your work um yes i know that all too well (laughs) yeah so so it basically came down to just like i can do anything um then it came out of what i'd done earlier in last year of like exercise meditation it's like two push-ups, you know, just like two minutes of meditation, you know, the absolute bare minimum uh, for game design is like draw a sketch, you know, brainstorm alliterative game names, just like the easiest, silliest kind of things. Um, And then my rules were just, you know, like do it and then post a picture to social media. So it could be something that I like could look back on and say like, this is the thing that I've done on this day. Um, And it, it worked. You know, people might think it's silly or when you ever like talk about daily practices, like, oh, that's not enough to really get to where you want to go. It's like maybe that on its own isn't enough, but the snowball effect and then eventually, you know, it's like 
you start to feel more comfortable with it and just like it's more natural for you than to sit down at your computer and work more because you've just gotten into this routine. Exactly. Uh, it's really powerful. Yeah, and you have, I mean, just looking back after months and months of it at how how different, you know, your days are compared to what they used to be, it's, it's that was the whole thing with this podcast was I was like, mm. I want to, I write in my notebook every day anyway, but if I start telling people what I write, then one is I hold myself accountable and now I, I have no excuse not to, but yeah. two is it's not just going to be my writings. It's going to, it's going to improve over time because I have to be, I have to up my game. So when, when we started doing this, I was thinking about your hashtag and it was funny because when I asked permission, the, the, my hesitation to, to ask you if I could use it was that I was going to be doing it every day. And I was like, that's the mm. whole point. <laughs> I was like, I don't want to like, like do the hashtag and, and I'm going to be doing this every day. Is that too much? And I was like, yeah. no, it, it shouldn't be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I, I'm just excited about more people using it because like when you see it, me post it or you post it or there's some other people who do it as well. You know, that's in their Twitter feeds. And now people are like, start to be aware of it. And then they can do it as well. And I want to have it spread because I think that it can be very powerful. And I'm excited to see just more designers making really awesome stuff because they they made this commitment. Yeah, absolutely. I've been, we have a little thread on Board Game Geek where I post our word of the day. And there's been people, some people have chimed in every day for the past, I don't know, like two months. So they're essentially doing exactly what I'm doing, but not on the podcast. Yeah. And I'm like, that's amazing. Just to see that is awesome. just really cool. And I look forward to their ideas because I'm like, well, they got mine are just the dumb, you know, <laughs> <laughs> they got the real ideas on here. Yeah, yeah. But it's all just, it just keeps me going every day. And it's, uh, yeah, it's awesome to see other people doing it. Yeah, people are smart. Um, and spoiler alert, uh, <laughs> spoiler alert, a big part of game design is just, doing what other people say <laughs> like when you play test your game or something and oh my, like a man and all artichokes that uh simple deck builder i'm working on um so the artichokes you know it's a, it's a deck builder so it's like oh and then you trash them and someone's like oh you mean uh you put them in the compost i'm like yes i do um <laughs> Totally just taking notes over here. Compost. Of course it was funny. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Duh, right? No, like, do you get a lot of playtesting out there? Like, do you do playtesting at mocks or do you do them separately? Uh, a little bit of playtesting at mocks. Um, my, my boss and everyone working there has been super supportive of the games that I'm working on, which has been awesome. Um, but I also, end of last year, kind of... Uh, co-opted the Seattle area tabletop game designers Facebook oh, group because cool. um, I I was like there's some local there's like Playtest Northwest and some organizations uh, that do playtesting uh, public facing so not with other designers and one that they didn't really work my schedule and two I wanted to do more of a community thing with local designers so I'm like yeah I'm just going to start meeting every week at my apartment because there's a semi-public <laughs> space here. Super easy for me. Uh, everyone wants to show up. so, And we've been doing it almost every week for the last few months. And That's it's awesome. It's been fantastic. Yeah, we, we definitely need something like that around here. We have a lot of, like, we're Philly-based. Uh, you know, mm. there's there's people that are outside of New York that's close enough. It's hour, hour and a half drive. But, I mean, there's so many designers around here, and we barely get together. So... We definitely need that. Yeah, and just like it's it's hard to kind of put yourself out there and be like, "Hey, come to my group." Because sometimes like one person shows up and it's you know a little weird or awkward. But <laughs> but we've gotten a group at this point who just like again, it's a routine. Like they're used to coming every week, so we just like gotten some amazing things coming out of it. That's awesome. So we first our our first we first met i met you at unplugged pax unplugged in november mm, yeah. um which was cool to see people that weren't from philly there yeah <laughs> like we <laughs> nobody knew what to expect like it was going to be the first one it was going to be super cool um but it was neat to see people you know like you and other people that that came from super far away oh, to, yeah. to something that's just you know i passed that on the way to work so mm. um but the first time I came in contact with your stuff was a couple of years ago. I played Heart Catchers, and it might have been at like there was a weird science fiction con that I used to go to in Rye, New York. Mm. Uh, it might have been that one, and I would see Tim Rodriguez there, and he showed me Heart Catchers, and I was like, "This is this is awesome, and this is 
tiny and we do these tiny games yeah (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) and then i i you know i got my copy of it and i've been a big fan of it since so it's it's cool to be able to chat on that (laughs) yeah it's so funny how the games industry works because you know you have all these indie publishers all these people um doing print and plays of other people's games so you could play someone else's games like like you said years before you actually (laughs) meet that person and just have this like weird interesting comic uh connection you know because like i i knew obviously all this cool stuff you were doing i like backed um some of the kickstarters and like i have your games and stuff so it's cool to actually like see you first face to face and be able to chat yeah that's awesome how long ago was that but so it's probably like when did like two and a half years ago maybe it's been, it's been a while it's definitely yeah. been a while yeah hard catchers because i think i started it like four-ish years ago um and then it was yeah being tested about two and a half years ago and the kickstarter was two years ago now yeah almost exactly two years ago nice i have my copy right here it's it's super cool sweet all right well tell everyone how they can get in touch with you sure uh if you want to get in touch with me i'm most active on twitter so you can just check out at emma larkins um say hi to me i'll definitely say hi back you can also check out my website emmalarkins.com it's got game design daily stuff and all my games on there and also connect with me on facebook and check out the facebook group awesome well thanks for doing this and we'll have, we'll have to do it again sometime yeah sounds great thank you all right <laughs>